have you ever wondered what it's like to rent out in Toronto? How much money do you have to throw out? How much money do you have to waste? What's the process like? Well, uh, we don't have to look any further because I was on the YouTube homepage and uh, CBC News, they released a new video a few days ago and it's titled, What It's Really Like Finding a Place to Rent in Toronto. As a person who is currently still renting out in Toronto, uh, I can tell you the uh, my experience, uh, all the crap that goes into it, and uh, we can determine how legitimate this video is. So if this sounds like something that you want to continue watching, uh, give this video a good old smash, and uh, now, Let's begin. Just little things that you used to think about, oh, like, am I going to have a family, things like that. You just don't know anymore because the cost of living is just like, how do you afford kids? It's literally, daycare is the price of rent these days. So it's, how do you afford just anything anymore? Do you know what's funny? We ordered lunch, but we ordered lunch to split. Because that's the yeah. reality. Yeah, because it's a reality. <laughs> like, it's, gotta, we gotta it's share. Amazing. They share just about everything, food, rent, taking care of their dogs, everything is divided in half. Maybe this is just me, but oftentimes when I'm buying a full meal, um, you know, I, I can split it into two meals in the sense that like I can eat full, like I could eat the whole thing and I'll be like quite full, but for the most part, I can eat half and just be like satisfied and then top that off with some snacks and stuff. I can carry that food over to the next day. And uh, yeah, it's basically eating, uh, eating out at a discount because uh, not only do you save time, it tastes good, you don't have to do any cooking prep work. More and more these days you're seeing kind of buildings like mine being bought by developers and people being told they have to move out and they're being displaced and it's again a situation where what I have right now is affordable, how long will it remain that way? Which is why it's really important when you're finding a building to rent, uh, whether that's a condo or apartment, you want to really ensure that that building is 2018 or older, as in like, you don't want any newer building because it's not rent control, which means the landlord could hypothetically screw you over and just say, well, Bank of Canada has raised the interest rates. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna reflect that into the prices. But they, they can't do that when it's rent control. How do you live with that sort of over your head all the time. Like I have a place right now, but, and then the kind of what, what ifs start, right? I think the what ifs have really been the biggest reason why I work full time and part time. Um, having kind of those two incomes allows me to put some money in savings. And so that if like things were to go bad in the future, I know I could, I could cover myself for a little bit. Yeah, it's, it's really sad out here in the, in this city that it's, it's not too uncommon for people to be working multiple jobs. Like they have a full-time job to be paying off their, like their main things like rent, food, all that sort of thing. And then their part-time job is kind of like that supplementary savings, all that stuff. But it's crazy because um, you're, you're basically working non-stop. It seems unrealistic to be able to stay in Toronto and also try to just be able to save for like a house or maybe a new car or anything, right? Um, so like I'm starting to really feel like I might be pushed out of the city and if I have to work within the city and commute, like I have coworkers that commute two hours to get into the city and I think like living life in general you have a baseline level of anxiety that you have to work through day to day whether it's family personal health wise and so now to have this added layer of stress is just it's a lot and for something that like when did housing which is a basic need become a privilege yeah it's definitely sad that like just the most basic human thing that we need uh in our life is just like food water shelter and that shelter part like it's lacking out in Canada. Like it, it's crazy because we have so much land, but because everyone like, there's, there's no one answer to answer the housing crisis situation because people like to look at immigration, people like to look at uh, the money printing, the interest rates, right? There's a bunch of factors that goes into it. But um, yeah, it, it's, it's really truly sad that how like um, the, the most basic things of just putting a roof over your head is uh, almost being unreachable right? Like of something that you aren't necessarily expected to just have available to you, but now you have to kind of decide, you know, am I going to 
have my own space? Am I going to have dogs? Am I going to have, you know, what I want in life? Or am I just going to have a room where I live in, right? It's, yeah, it's scary. And you know what's even more scary? Because the go-to place for, uh, you know, people who want to move out of Toronto because they're just like, hey, it's too expensive. Anywhere you go, pretty much is like expensive. Like, yeah, I was looking at Calgary the other week or the last few days and just the real estate. I just want to see how much prices have gone in, 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 the, in Calgary because people are like, hey, it's, it's unaffordable in Toronto. I'll go, I'll go to Calgary. And I'm, 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 I'm like looking at the prices in, in Calgary. And I'm like, damn, prices have gone up. Like the rent there is now $1,700 and I'm looking to buy a, a detached home. Prices there are like, what, 600K now, like 650, 700K. But the, you definitely still get, it's, it's, it's definitely a bigger bang for your buck. But the, the narrative before was like, hey, go to Calgary and everything's like 50% off. Do you know, the average cost of a detached home here in Edmonton or down in Calgary is about one third the price of what it is in the greater Toronto or greater Vancouver areas. And then now it's like, mm, you know, it's like you get uh, you get a quarter, you get uh, it's, it's a quarter cheaper, right? Because uh, Toronto is like a million bucks, uh, you know, Calgary is like 700k, right? So you get like, yeah, you know, a little discount. I'm here right now for work, and I'm trying to get out, and I've only been here for a year and a half. At 44, she always thought she'd be further along. She knows she's lucky compared to many. Well, she makes good money. Her work is freelance, so there's no guarantees. I mean, I'm working 70 to 80 hour weeks easy. And it's just like at the end of the month, there's like literally nothing left. And you're like, what the hell? Like, how is this even possible? So what I've heard about the tough part about being a uh, entrepreneur or a freelancer out in uh, t Toronto is that uh, on one end, there's a lot more opportunities here. So your clients might be here, but the problem is because ex everything's so expensive, you're like, Hmm, you might want to go elsewhere is another option. Like, uh, let's just say if she has the, uh, the ability to do it elsewhere, then uh, she may want to consider doing it elsewhere. But the, the, I don't know her situation. There's, there's a lot of reasons why a person stays in the city or why they leave despite it being like so expensive here. J just look at me. Her building is older, so covered by rent control, but she thinks the government should go even further and introduce rent caps. And my rent has doubled in the last 10 years. So when are we, like, it's it's all noble thinking that we're buying, uh, building more units and that we're increasing the housing market and whatnot. What? There's no point to it if the rent is like $3,000 for these units. The thing is, and even I have to remind myself that it's quick to just blame it on the, the landlord, right? It's like the landlord is the, the fault. All the landlord is really doing is just pricing it at the price point that they're being charged from their mortgage, right? So if they locked it down at a, a lower interest rate at the time at 1% for their 500K condo, right? Uh, well, now that's like 6.5% at the time of this recording. Um, yeah, they're basically just saying like, okay, well, I don't want to cover the expense. We'll toss it to them. Not saying it's right. Don't get me wrong. Like these people, you, you forget that the, you, you don't feel bad because they are... Uh, they're, they're already winning in life, okay? They already have an investment property. So they already have a place to live and they're like, this is just to make more money. There's a gap between how uh, inviting Canada looks from the outside and how difficult it is to get your foot inside, especially into the city when you want to come. You find a lot of things stacked against newcomers and it's getting worse. That's definitely a thing. I've heard from a lot of people who have moved here from the different uh, countries. They're almost, um, you know, they're, they're told that Canada is like a beautiful place. And don't get me wrong, Canada is beautiful. Like there's a lot of stuff, we have healthcare, all that sort of thing. But when you're picking like a, such an unaffordable city like uh, Toronto, where even the locals are having issues finding uh, a place to live, it's, it makes it that much challenging for people, for all the newcomers that are coming here. Like it's almost to the point where like, if here, here I am, I've been living in Canada like all my life, been born and raised here, but like it, it, it's challenging for me. So for someone that's a newcomer here in, in this era, it's like, I don't even know how they do it. Silo Okura arrived in Toronto from Turkey in 2019. He says it was tough convincing landlords to rent his family of three a unit. Because especially as a newcomer, you have no presence here. You don't have bank accounts. Most often, you don't have employment letters. Any of that goes uh, the, the holy grail that they ask. You know, going to pay stuff. 
credit and credit scores. Right now, people are paying 12 months up front of rent. That is nuts. Paying 12 months up in, in advance for rent. So let's just say this family, uh, God forbids, they're just renting out just a one bedroom. That's $2,500. So in paying 12 months in advance, that's $30,000 up front. What? Now the focus is making ends meet and paying rent. Since rent and other things are like fixed expenses are so much such a big part of our budget, we're trying to, you know, to compensate on other things. Can we afford a trial trip back home? My wife wanted to do that, but then she did, took a look at the uh, plane tickets and said, is it worth paying a month's rent? I feel really bad for this man because you, you come here from Turkey to Toronto and it's just so purely unaffordable. Um, like, if, if, I, if I had a family, right, with kids and all that sort of thing, like, 100%, if, if I was in his situation, this is just me, I can't comment on what he should do, but I'd just, I'd just go to, like, a cheaper city, honestly. Like, even going to Ottawa, that's, like, maybe, like, a five-hour drive from um, Toronto, that's when you start seeing prices slowly, uh, you know, ease off. Because anything in, like, the GTA area, even, like, the Hamilton area, going as far as, like, Guelph, even those places right now are like stupidly priced, but it's not until you like hit uh, like the, the Ottawa region, in my opinion, is like when you start seeing prices like uh, drop a little bit and it drops even further when you switch provinces. Because at the end of the day, you kind of recognize that if you're gonna have to be forced to jack up like $2,000 in rent, then you might as well jack up uh, $2,000 and have a nice place or even have like a townhouse, you know, something like that. It's like a better bang for your buck. So like it, 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 it boils down to the individual, but hey, when you have a family, you just need space. So anyhow, with that said, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed me uh, react to what it's like, or what it's really like finding a place to rent in Toronto. I thought they were gonna go into kind of like the process of like having all your papers and documentations uh, ready to go, all that sort of thing. But uh, it was a different uh, kind of story of it, but still great overall. So uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. And I guess I'll see you guys all in the next one. Peace.